Welcome to the Guitar Arrangers Podcast, the greatest guitar arrangers podcast in the history of the universe. Now, Thomas, does the universe include the Dune universe? As the uh, ranger of the planets, I can say, uh, no, it does not. Okay. It doesn't even include uh, Pluto or Earth. Boy, okay. I was feeling a lot better about our podcast before, <laughs> I, before I asked that question. I didn't mean to shoot down your idea, old friend. What, 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 was your, what are you thinking? Today we were talking about Dune. That's a great question. So today we're going to be talking about Dune. To break it down for you real quick, uh, Hans Zimmer composed the soundtrack for the Dune movie. There are a couple different songs. I did not really see enough of any one piece to warrant like a full episode. So we're just going to do a full Dune episode today. Any piece from the movie counts. And I think we should use sandworms today as our scale. Uh, It kind of brings us back to the first episode. We did squid games. We rated with uh, tentacles. I think today we could do a scale of one to 10 sandworms. Whoa. Uh, Sandworms are delicious, nutritious, and they have exactly uh, 92,846 teeth. Yes. As, so as, we'll be going on a rating of. Do, do you want to do a rating of one to ninety six thousand? Oh, I forgot. About <laughs> I think that's only fair. This is I hard. think that's this is only hard. fair. Yeah, I think that's only fair. Sand, so uh, we want to do sandworm teeth <laughs> up to what was the high score? Uh, uh, oh, jeez, ninety six thousand forty two. <laughs> sure <laughs> sure that's it that's our rating that's our rating all right top all right. score is 96,000 uh a couple zeros 42 yeah I'm, well i'm excited to get into this first video you know i watched the trailer for this and I, i'm gonna have to go see this in the movies it looks pretty cool and I, i'm a big fan of uh sci-fi films i like sci-fi stuff um it's kind of like a mixture of sci-fi and and mad max you know or like uh, you know the the sandworms they remind me of uh, oh man Star Wars fans are gonna gonna hate me for this but Sarlacc. I, whatever what <laughs> Sarlacc is the is the sand dune monster right Sarlacc pit fun fact yeah my metal band when I was a uh, in high school we wanted to name it something with Sarlacc like. <laughs> In, into the Sarlacc pit oh, or man. something. I don't know. I think that's the name. Yeah, you'd have monster. Disney after your case. That's true. I didn't, well, we didn't even think about off. that. <laughs> no, probably not. That would be good press. All press is good press. <laughs> I don't care. We'll take it. All press is good press. And you've got your favorite uh, sparkling water here with us today. Every time. As always. Every time. I don't know how you drink that stuff. Is it? Your, it's just like regular water, right? It's not flavored. No, no flavor. But it's bubbly. Bubbly water. I like Eskipazar. We got a couple here in Turkey. Uh, Eskipazar is the best one, though. It's I the just don't understand. One. I don't understand. I don't know. What is the allure? Well, I'll edit all this out, but it's like drinking. Uh... <laughs> don't edit this out. This is what the people want to know. I don't know. I guess I used to like soda a lot, and now I find it too sweet. But I like the way the carbonation feels. I like That's the fizziness. Crazy. I'm going to have to try this. I'm going to have to try this. It's too bad they don't have uh, sparkling water on this desert planet in which a dune takes place. Otherwise, maybe they would be uh, nicer to each other and they wouldn't yeah, have so I many think conflicts. In, in the desert, you take any water you can get. Let this be a lesson. This is uh, Tony and Thomas's survivalist podcast. Uh, okay, so let's get right into it. We got a lot of videos to check out today. Guitar UNY, Guitar Rooney. Hmm. D- Maybe his name's Rooney. Dmitry, give it a try. Kuznetsov. Yeah, Dmitry Kuznetsov. Wow. 
Wow, this is interesting. <laughs> some base thing happening off screen. Uh, some kind of bass drum happening. I like these chords and the Hans Zimmer vibes for sure. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Who knew you could use a nail file? Oh, I'm blown away. <laughs> oh my god. That's pretty crazy stuff. That company that oh man, it's too short. That company yeah, that just... <laughs> targets me with the Instagram ads every day for that guitar bow is gonna be so mad when they see that you can just use a nail file and bow your electric guitar with it. Is it a nail file? Or is it just a a white uh, Ebo. It's not. Well, Ebo is the electronic one. There's that other company that uses the... The tiny bows. The, yeah. the bow <laughs> for like acoustic guitars. <laughs> this looks like a nail file to me. I could be wrong. No way. Maybe it's not. Yeah, Dimitri, you gotta let us know what the... Is it a nail file or is it a... Some sort yeah, of share your oh. secrets. That was cool. There's also uh, there's also a shaker that's happening off screen. There's an egg shaker that's happening off screen. Yeah, and um, I don't know the classical guitar strumming. I don't know if I like the classical guitar strumming as much. I almost like everything else that's going on, like all the percussion and the electric guitar with the crazy uh bow thing, more than I actually like the just normal guitar stuff going on. I'm like that. I don't know. <laughs> maybe a maybe a steel string guitar would 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 bring it home. I'm not sure. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I guess you know the soundtrack is a mix of acoustic instruments with some electric guitar and electronics and stuff. So I guess it is staying true to that sound by having at least like one acoustic instrument in there. But at the same time, yeah, I would maybe just do this all on electric guitar which <laughs> which a lot of people did actually as we'll see so mm. i don't know it's interesting i like the creativity and then this intro part i mean you can't do one thing is with an electric guitar you cannot do the dynamics your only options for dynamics on an electric guitar within reason are post-production or foot pedal or um, volume knob but that's really hard to do while you're playing guitar you can a little bit like play harder depress the strings further but that does not affect the volume nearly as much as it does on a classical guitar and if you're using like a compressor or something in your tone that's basically not going to like matter how hard you're plucking the strings so this is a good choice acoustic guitar just purely for being able to do dynamics. Yeah, it's funny. He has that little charm that's hanging from the uh, left of the guitar. I like I it. It looks like a little right side. nuclear waste symbol or something. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it is. It would bother me having something bumping into my hand while I was playing. I don't know. It's given me like uh, S. Thought, what's his name? S. Tone. <laughs> yeah, but Estas Tone never has something uh, underneath, like hanging no. off of there. He would tie it to uh, one the of the incense tuning pegs. I'm thinking of. He's did the incense, but he he'll have like a lucky rabbit's foot, but it'll be on one of the tuning pegs or something. All right, all right. It will be bumping his hand. Yeah. It's kind of weird. This guy's got like another set of hands that's sort of reaching under and around the screen and coming out this way, you know? <laughs> I guess his friend or something is doing that, but like 
it wouldn't be that hard to edit your own hands into the shot like that if you're using a tripod <laughs> it's funny he looks yeah. like he's got the same background as me too where he actually filmed that right <laughs> over here he does look like he is kind of the the same background as you yeah uh, he's also got the world's greatest mustache of any uh you know classical guitar player i've seen he's bringing it back hands, to uh, hands down he's bringing it back to tariga days bringing what do you back. think what do you think Tariga would think of this arrangement? He would say uh, 10 out of 10, but he would probably say it in Spanish. Anyway, yeah, that was, that. I would say that was a pleasant surprise. So before this episode started, I watched the first 10 seconds of every video just to like make sure that it was something that would fit in the episode. I had no idea where this one was going to go, and it really surprised me. Um, particularly the bode effect was just not something I was expecting to get. Um, I would yeah. like to know where the bass drone is coming from since he visually showed us everything else that was <laughs> happening. I think it would have been cool to try and like represent a bass drone somehow visually um, just for the YouTube viewer. Yeah. If there's going to be more instruments going on, I want to see them going on. You know, and I'm pretty sure there's a, maybe I'm crazy, but I feel like there's an egg shaker in there somewhere, a shaker of some sort. So what do, what do you want to rate this one? Yeah, I'm going to give this one at least, uh, I'm going to give this one just about 80,159 uh, sandworm teeth. <laughs> Tony's heart just dropped as he realized all of the editing he must do <laughs> now that he's come up with this rating system. <laughs> it's fine. We're we're stepping it up today. I don't care. It's big boy editing time. Um, my my biggest concern right now is that I'm going to say a number th like that doesn't exist because I'm going to make a mistake. <laughs> On the on the digits. All right, let's see if I can do this. So it's uh, eighty seven thousand five hundred and forty six. There we go. That is slightly higher than my rating. Yeah. What the heck? Even have more teeth than me. What was yeah, the gonna high a, score again? This is gonna be a nightmare in shipping. Uh, All right. No, but this was this is this is quite nice. I would give it more teeth if his little. Uh, dangling uh ornament there on his guitar was 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 tied to one of the uh tuning pegs instead okay i don't know i don't know <laughs> i think All right. um this is like a really cool youtube video it's really great sound um is it a guitar arrangement for youtube yes but i mean you you're never gonna play this live but you know whatever that's true we're making it for youtube his sound design project, basically, he could get hired to make a film soundtrack in the future if he did stuff like this. Mm, maybe he just likes the sick jams. Okay, so here we have Mike Arneson guitar. Here is my classical guitar cover slash arrangement of the song Paul's Dream. So this is the most common song that people or a piece that people um covered on youtube let's uh let's see how he he did it oh my god we cannot escape beyond the guitar uh, <laughs> wow he's everywhere he is everywhere beyond the guitar Making connections it's a pin for being in um gets an award for being in every one of our episodes somehow yes <laughs> uh in this case top comments wait really quick before we start did he this do guy's one? in Portland. I just want to see this guy's. Uh... No, he didn't. Okay. Anyway, yeah. All right. I'm ex I'm excited to check it out. I'm ready for this. Let's right, hear it. Happen. Yeah, crank that stuff. Oh, so serious. I'm hearing something else. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> this is a man of danger. 
Get that, get that knife away from the guitar. Very interesting. guitar. I feel like I'm hearing weird sounds when the notes change. It must be the delay or something. That was cool. Interesting. I'm really liking this sound. I'm not sure what's going on, but there's it's, a it's there's spooky. a voice. There's a somebody's going. <laughs> you think so? I mean, that yeah, could be yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of, oh yeah. And then somehow the, the bass is too, turned up really high, but the, the treble is a little lower. Uh, so it's, the tremolo is very quiet. I almost wonder if the voices are just reverb though. So you could hear somebody like, uh, like, uh, uh changing vowels and, and singing something. I think but, uh, that part right there is the guitar lick. I could be wrong. This heavy. So that's, I think, electric guitar normally. Or in oh, music. interesting. I think. Yeah, it's interesting how he's got the tuning set up to at least uh, drop D. Uh, that way he could just play the the low strings as uh, his sort of accompaniment. And they're always the right note without changing anything in the left hand. Man, this one's really interesting. I don't know what um, to call this. I mean, it seems like he didn't either because he said cover slash arrangement. And I, and I wonder what this... This is not necessarily possible to play live solo. Although you could arrange this arrangement for like, I think two people could probably play this. Whether or not the voices could be accomplished with, with reverb, I'm not sure. I really think it could have been a pitched reverb or I don't know. Do you think he just recorded his voice in a closet or something? That or he just added it in post with a synth or something. Yeah, but I guess. I, I hope he didn't. Maybe he did. It's it's I, definitely got a vowel change in it, so I don't know if you can do that mm. without... Um, it might just be his voice. Okay. Because um, I noticed the... <laughs> like, at the beginning, he was using a knife on the strings, and... Yeah. It just seemed like he was going out of his way to do everything on the guitar. I, I want to believe in my head that there was a way to accomplish <laughs> that voice sound without... 
I guess this is something I've complained about in the past too. In a way, I want to see if you can do everything on guitar. That's just so much. Yeah, I was going to say that too. Because at first I was going to, I was going to say, oh, there were two guitars, but that's right. At the beginning, there was, there was, he was playing with the knife while he was playing the guitar at the same time while he had another version of himself playing the, the guitar. So, um, yeah, you know what? I would almost like this more if it was busker style and he was out on the street and he just took time to like play with the guitar with a knife and then he think... did all of these riffs. I would actually I would actually enjoy that a lot cuz then it's more like, you know, you can just do do it with one guitar, you know? Anybody could do that. It's like, you know, it opens up a world of possibilities. Well, first of all, let me just say to the listeners, <laughs> any aspiring guitar arrangers out there, do not take a steak knife or whatever hunting knife um, out to the sh- <laughs> to like the central business di- district of your city. Um, <laughs> I just I feel like that will end poorly. I'm not sure if those are even legal to carry um anyway <laughs> yeah this I, is the most I think, dangerous i think they have to be the, the foldable kind right i think we've just entered into a new era of arranging for youtube and this is like he's using, <laughs> using the knife because he's using the knife yes because no. he's using the knife it made for a great thumbnail photo the knife was in the thumbnail photo but oh. I think um, it happened with the last guy too. Uh, it's an arrangement that you wouldn't play in a recital or something or live, but you're not limited by that anymore. You're going to reach a wider audience on YouTube. Why limit yourself? You can do whatever you want. This is like a perfect arrangement cover for YouTube. It's uh, more about sound design and showing the interesting techniques that you chose. My only complaint is that um, if there was anything that was not done with the guitar, that bums me out. Like, I don't mind if you layer five guitars. I think it would be cool to not have to use a synthesizer or something, though, in addition. I guess you said there was a vowel change in the um, in the reverb. I really wanted to believe that that was reverb in the in the singing. Sorry. I've uh, listened to enough uh, uh, Tibetan throat singing to know that uh, there's a vowel change, you know. But uh, this is another ringed gentleman we have here. I don't know how they do it, how they play with those things on their hands. He should have taken the ring off and played with the ring with, instead of the knife, and then That's you true. can do it all without having to reach for another piece of equipment. We well, haven't watched all of his videos, but there's, there's possibly an extended ring technique. That'd be cool. You know, a lot of these people who do youtube covers have done lord of the rings too so it'd be interesting to see uh if any of those involved ring ring extended techniques oh there you go yeah we're missing out on the true uh uh you know cover experience where someone just throws fistfuls of sand at their guitar that would make the truly appropriate uh dune guitar cover yeah. And yeah, once um, once you get our care package of um, sandworm teeth in the mail, you could uh, use those instead of your knife to uh, do some of these techniques. Maybe arrange one of the other pieces from the movie. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that, that could work. That could work. You, in fact, why not do a whole playlist of knife uh, and guitar duets? It could be beautiful. I'm sold. I think it would be cool. I mean, it would be cool to see two people playing this like actually live and someone using the knife (laughs) and uh, I don't know, piezo pickup plugged into your computer. Yeah. It's possible. It would be maybe too much work for a short piece, (laughs) but man, that would be cool. Yeah. You know what it reminds me of? You know what it reminds me of? Reminds me of uh, people that play a saw with a bow have you ever seen that where they like hold the big big saw between their legs and they kind of like bend it back and forth 
uh, mm-hmm. as they bow it and it makes this uh, singing sound. I, um, and- I'll send you a video later. I saw in um, Uruguay, I can't pronounce the name properly. Um, I was there for one day and I saw this like amazing tango recital thing that my friend knew about. Um, and some guy played a saw that it was, it was really good at the saw. Like, I, was, I couldn't believe it. It That's was so dangerous. cool. It was so cool. Yeah. The most dangerous instrument known to man, other than the combat knife that this gentleman used. What kind of a sandworm teeth rating do you want to give this one? Yeah, I'm definitely going to give this one 81,951. How could you give it more? How could you give it less? 81,951. That's interesting. I already forgot what I gave the last guy. (laughs) I feel like this one is going to have to be a little higher because... I think more work went in and it's a longer piece is a more ambitious piece. I mean, the video it's four, it's four times the length and it's not repetitive. So it, I think a lot more work went into this. I'm going to say 92,651. Wow. Wow. Tony's giving uh, this guy so many teeth. teeth. Yeah. yeah. Tony's giving this guy so many sandworm teeth. It's inspiring me. Uh, to to give this guy some more of my beautiful, precious teeth. So I'm going to give this guy uh, 89,951 instead. 89,951. Oh, my God. Thomas wants me to... Uh... Oh, I take any... it back again. No. Uh... <laughs> no. One rating for customer, <laughs> sir. Please. Please. Oh, my goodness. This episode is gonna uh, come out in like 2027. That's how long it's gonna take me to edit it. But it will yeah, be accurate. Every number you see on the screen will be correct. <laughs> if there's one incorrect number, please lambast Tony in the comment section below. Let's uh, let's check out another Dune arrangement. Okay, here we have uh, Evan Handyside, who will be playing Herald of the Change, Hans Zimmer. I don't believe anyone covered this one so far. Mm, okay. Let's see if there's any other important information. Okay, I will read this. I based the guitar arrangement from the track Herald of Change where the principal melody is syncopated and has a mellower execution. I also added elements of the tracks Gome Jabber and Leaving Caledon. Okay, so we did hear Leaving Caledon before. So it's a little bit of a medley. Let's check it out. So here we have a solo guitar arrangement no extended techniques with the recording setup except a little bit of reverb Looks like it's made out of wood, but I, it's going pretty well so far. Uh, I really like uh, how it's just kind of all on one instrument. Yeah. You, know, you could walk past somebody and they could be playing this in the desert covered in a shroud. I thought you were going to say somebody could be playing this busking. It's like, no. <laughs> they could be playing this while busking yeah. you could play and this threatening a strangers with a knife.
This is like a guaranteed way to never get hired for another wedding, just to play this. Yeah, and this is a man who has nothing to prove, you know? He's got all those instruments in the background. He doesn't need them. He can do it all on one. You can see the other instruments later. You don't need to see in every video that he can play every instrument. Yeah, this was the only um, solo finger style arrangement I could find from Dune. I dig it. It's pretty. It's pretty cool. It kind of. Um, reminds me of um, some of the Mastodon stuff, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, song? yeah. Uh, like um, the Remission album. Mm. Please subscribe. Uh, really though, people should subscribe to this channel. That's awesome. That's yeah, pretty good. Yeah, I really like that this one um, can be performed live. This could go in a recital or whatever, and the sheet music could be sold or uh, shared or distributed, whatever, which is really cool. I think that is a part of guitar arranging that I, I like to see. I guess it separates it from the YouTube sound design arrangements, which are maybe cool for different reasons i think that this arrangement is pretty cool like i think it could be spruced up a little bit but i like the idea that the youtube video is going to be more accessible for you to take it and then spruce it up how you want and if this guy was to try and spruce it up with some like some trills or something every now and then or some little ornaments or some funky slides or playing on the frets you know all kinds of cool noises that could be cool in an arrangement like this i think um but you might not like how somebody else does it if they add in those things because it's it's normally very taste specific to each person so i like the idea that the thing that he's got is more a little bit more like uh even and easy uh, more accessible and easy to understand than a bunch of flashy stuff and we're just watching his hands as he one takes it you that's know true. that's that's pretty good i think the technique that the first um player used with the um light um uh, i don't know what you yeah call that. oh i oh we used to do that all the time at the romero institute they called it a uh, flesh de dio okay flesh of the hand i would have liked fingers? i feel like that could have been really cool because that's like the one element of sound design that would work really well with the Hans Zimmer music and that you could do live. It would have been cool if the intro of this piece maybe had that in it. I know he's arranging a different piece, but still that could have been a cool addition. You could do stuff with different tones. Um, it did get kind of repetitive in that sense, but um, it's, it's ready to go sheet music that you could, you know, distribute. So that's really cool. And, you know, yeah, awesome. and people who interpret the music could do it however they want. Yes. Unless you want to do it in a way that I don't agree with. In that case, you should give up playing the guitar. That is well, the message of our podcast. Classical guitar has rules. If you yeah. perform this piece wearing a tuxedo, instantly not valid. <laughs> if yeah. you do not this have is... round uh, eyeglasses, I'm not interested in hearing yeah. your interpretation turtleneck would have helped also so we knew that he you know he's a real classical guitarist that would have been helpful yeah this is thomas and tony's uh authoritarianism podcast <laughs> where we tell you the way you must behave the way you must think the way you must feel that's right so yes. how many uh sandworm teeth are you feeling thomas 
Obviously, you're going to have to give this guy a 92,363 sand worm teeth. There's no other option. How could you give... How, how could anybody think different? I, I, I don't know. I was actually thinking 92,365. Um, you always have to one-up me, don't you? You always have to one-up me. That's clever. I essentially get to give the same score, but he can like me a little bit more than... Uh, or I don't know. Maybe he'll respect. Uh, maybe he'll respect Thomas those two extra teeth uh, a little bit more. He's like, you know, <laughs> that was more honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah awesome. Okay, so oh. leaving Caledon again. Another <laughs> by Trey J. Anderson. <laughs> what kind of guitar is this? Okay, did you see that? I do this <laughs> when I had to do um, piano for my undergrad. Even though I was, you know, a guitar performance major, you have to play piano, and it is so hard to not try and do vibrato when I play piano. Do you have that problem? Like, it does nothing. Oh. It does <laughs> absolutely nothing. But whenever I play piano, I like, I just want to. I yeah do the vibrato and he's doing it uh, here. <laughs> i'm sure there's some school of uh of a uh, piano technique where some guy mystically tells everyone oh when you wiggle your finger on the piano key it, it really does make a different sound absolutely not there is no <laughs> way that anyone would say that i'm almost positive i've i've uh some very prolific piano teachers that probably do say that. Get out of here. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Some of these electric... People say lots of stuff. Some of these electric pianos or keyboards do have, like, touch sensors that might... But I don't think his did. Hmm. See? Because he's got a... Um, right. Well, they would say that on an acoustic here. piano. Um, you can see up in the corner here, he's got a pitch bender. <laughs> he does so, actually have a pitch bender, so he could. Well, actually... It's very common. Some of the new um, MIDI keyboards have um, like a sensor strip on the key. So you could like move your finger like while you're right. No, the yeah. keys, you could yeah, like, yeah. do stuff. But at the beginning of this video, he was clearly doing like vibrato. Right. Like, right, right, right. I'm telling you, it's just a guitar thing. Like, if you play enough guitar, you just want to shake your finger. <laughs> well, it's true. Uh, that's how uh, the keytar that we have here in house. I should have the keytar in the background, but that uh, thing has one of those touch sensor uh, pitch bender on things. the keys, or it has on the keytar on the set on the left hand where you would normally fret a guitar. Oh, and the right yeah, yeah, has of all the course, keys. of course. <laughs> so I think that's pretty cool. This is, yeah, this is more like of a, a traditional. I don't want to say traditional, but this is this is like the most common MIDI setup where you have two expression knobs available for the left hand, and then the right hand would basically play um, the the pitches. Hmm. Um, that's that's very common, and keytar is basically the same thing, um, except yeah. in a different position. Uh, but yeah, nowadays key MIDI keyboards have um, built into the keys, so you can play two hands and do expression. Mm, right, that's a very different guitar it. technique being used here. <laughs> but I do like that. We get the seeing, sandworm. We're actually seeing somebody play their MIDI for once. I guess that's true. Three guitars. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. That was that all sounded very uh... build up to the subscribe. Whoa. Yeah, that sounds very familiar uh, or very similar 
to the actual soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. The soundtrack itself, I don't know what I was using. It must be like electric um, violin, but it's probably something similar to that. I know there's some kind of like unique instruments that people have just for sound design. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. You don't think it's just some kind of synth? In the soundtrack? I think, no, I think it's all real instruments. I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I'm good. I would bet the budget for this movie. No, hmm. I don't think I, I could be completely wrong, but I don't think they would use MIDI um, because MIDI just always ages so poorly compared to real instruments. Um, you can just always yeah. tell what exactly when something was recorded on a synth. Um, <laughs> yeah. There might have yeah, been some funny. buried in there, but there's definitely real instruments playing those melodies for sure. Otherwise, uh, the makers of Dune should have hired this guy to play this because I think I think, this would, That's I think true. this would sound better than full MIDI. It's definitely not full MIDI. There might be one synth in there. Taste. Yeah, I mean, I definitely got the vibe that there were a lot of electric guitars in the uh, in the real soundtrack. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think they were electric guitars, but they were close. Electric. Ah, uh, Tony's just a hater. Uh, because there was no attack sound, like you would expect. Um, it sounded more like it was being bowed. And now you could bow an electric guitar, you use an ebow or something, but I don't think that was what was going on. Um, it mm. still has a different sound. I think it might have just been electric violins or something like that. Um, but you were the one who showed me that, like, specific some guy had invented an instrument for sound design or something. A uh, guitar viol, yeah. the instrument that was used in the soundtrack of the movie Watchmen. Yeah, I would be willing to bet that it was something more similar to that. No, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, put it past them. That actually is a good idea. Yeah, it, it might be something like that. That could be cool. All right. So this Did is another. It's another YouTube sound design project. I think it was was pretty successful. Um, so I will give this one. Let's say uh, 92,471. Are you sure you want that to be your rating, Tony? Are you sure? Um, Are you sure? No, you know what? You're right. 92,936. <laughs> yes, I am only going to give it uh, one golden sand dune tooth the greatest tooth in the history of of the sandworm teeth the most legendary valuable tooth there is you know because i think this matches the soundtrack the most so this one's pretty this one's pretty good this one's pretty spot on <laughs> don't worry you don't have to uh make the tooth uh look different in appearance it may look like a normal tooth to you, but it is a legendary ancient tooth. It's an antique, really. It's very valuable. Okay, I got it from my grandmother. Don't I be was rude. Thinking, if you, so if you want to give it a perfect, if you want to give it a perfect score, you could even give him like just one bottle of water or something. I'm, I, it's not about perfection, and if I, it's just another thing. You know, I'm just, it's just another way to add chaos to the rating system. Okay. I'm just making it even more chaotic. Cool. Uh, yeah, I, I think this one's great. It's a um, YouTube sound design project, which we, we're going to have to like come up with a word for that um, because I really think <laughs> that it's a different thing than arranging and it's a different thing. I guess arranging to me implies that there's some kind of constraint, whereas you're really not under any kind of constraint when you're doing a YouTube sound design project. You're like, oh, uh, there's a third harmony here. Like, should I cut it out? 
so that I can make this fingering work. No, we'll add another guitar playing it again. Uh, which is great because <laughs> it sounds awesome. Uh, it doesn't have the same problems that arranging would have. Um, you're not having to make the same kind of decisions. Arranging is almost like an art of cutting things out. And here it's like, we'll just add another thing until we get everything we need. It's I would say, thing. I would say rather than saying that it is not arranging, I would say that it's kind of a different kind of arranging because the guitar is so incredibly diverse that there are, you know, even the sub genres of guitar get diverse. And so I think that as far as arranging goes, I mean, there's like orchestral transcribing and arranging. Like if you were going to take something that was a big band piece and you were going to listen to every instrument you know you're going to listen to the trumpet line right out the trumpet line you're going to listen to the clarinet line and right out the clarinet line you're going to listen to the guitar right out that listen to the bass right out that and give it to your band kids and have them all play it the process is for that is almost exactly the same as this i think so yeah this is just like an orchestral sort of arranging slash transcribing and i feel like arranging and transcribing are like or like this. I feel like transcribing is almost like a piece, a part of arranging. Yeah, I was trying to avoid saying basically that, but I think that this is more like arranging, but the main focus is orchestration and not, um, it's, it's basically orchestrating something or transcribing it, like you said. Um, so you're going to have to focus so much on the sound more so than playing. Cause I mean, these, these little melodies, it doesn't matter. It's easy to play and no problem. It's just all about how do I get it to sound correct? But the reason I didn't want to say that this is like arranging, but with a heavy orchestration is because some classical guitar person is going to say the classical guitar is an orchestra and every string is, you know, and that, I was I was trying to avoid backlash from from that community, I guess. Um, I mean, maybe this argue the... that everything they do is orchestration, but I think this is orchestration. Well, orchestration is specifically just taking instruments, having a different instrument play the same line, and transcribing is when you do that. But you have to figure it all out yourself, and you have to either listen to it or you have to rewrite it in some way. Well, I think uh, orchestration doesn't necessarily imply changing anything. Like there's classes on orchestration for composers that they're not taking a piece and reorchestrating it for another ensemble or something. They just consider while they're composing the, the orchestration, like what, uh, in a classical orchestra, what instruments will I have play this melody that I composed on the piano? So I guess if you're, if you're taking it from the piano, maybe I think orchestration <laughs> is just, I, I managed to talk myself into a circle there. Assuming that, <laughs> assuming that some composers don't write everything at the piano or did they all write at the piano? I don't know. Maybe that's the law. Maybe in academic, academic uh, music. Is that the law? Yes. Okay, so that's do that's not what violate the law. Is, is taking no, your, I don't know your piano composition and expanding it to, to orchestra. Okay. Well, you could consider, for example, if you took an orchestra piece and you made all of the different instruments play different lines so that different sections would have different textures, then that would be re orchestration, yeah, as well. Yeah, adding the re in there, I guess what I'm saying is the. For me, the word orchestration just means sound design. So whether or not you're changing instruments or ensembles or whatever, at the end of the day, it's basically how do you choose the sound that you want. So on a classical guitar, there's a lot of orchestration that you can do. And when you're making a YouTube guitar cover, 
or arrangement where you're not limited and you can play as many guitars as you want, then your main focus is again orchestration. How do we choose the sounds? Well, now now you're you're almost conflating the thing that you said was uniquely to specific to solo guitar arranging with general orchestration. Like I don't know. I think everybody has a different opinion about it, but to me, yeah, there is something intrinsically instrument change related to orchestration, whether you're having, you're deciding whether to have one French horns or five, and you're deciding what instrument will play what part and what register. And normally there's multiple instruments involved. I think that's all more orchestration stuff. And I think transcribing stuff is more like, uh, is, is, is almost something else. There's almost, there's more of a one-to-one sort of process going on there. But I wouldn't necessarily say that deciding what octave to play a line within the same instrument, I don't know if I would necessarily say that that's orchestration. I don't know. And, you know, a lot of it is like a big Venn diagram where there's a lot of stuff that's all blended the same. So there's a lot of stuff that is both orchestration and arranging or both orchestration and transcribing or both transcribing and arranging. I see. So you're, um, I guess that was something that I hadn't actually thought about even while I was just talking right there, but so changing the octave or something, I guess when you're doing like a solo classical guitar arrangement, it's basically a given that you're going to like change some octaves of sections. Whereas, um, I guess in this scenario, I was not expecting, I would not expect you to change octaves and I would not consider that orchestration. You're not limited by the playing constraints so it's really just all about sound choices um but yeah i don't think um i guess yeah if you were gonna do like changing keys and changing octaves and stuff like that or playing with a different drastically different technique then you're looking more towards what i would think of as like traditional arranging it's hard to say because using we are also not arrangers podcast you know arranging itself is so diverse that it has there's there's a lot of people for example that do arranging for jazz bands and arranging for marching bands that really do a lot of different stuff than you would ever have to uh, encounter as a guitar arranger and uh so it's kind of a weird thing um um there's a lot out there about guitar arranging that is just completely unknown and and very mysterious because it's not something that is taught in like universities um as a part of the courses as much there's a lot of other things and that and like you know standards of competition standards audition standards of of guitar you know not really allowing guitar arrangements as much it makes it all a very tricky thing so that's something that uh, we're all doing together. Us in the audience, we're all on this journey to kind of discover what uh, guitar arranging is and is not. I think the original point maybe is being a little convoluted here. <laughs> Clearly, we need to have a philosophical discussion about what actually is arranging. I think that YouTube has led to some kind of new category where it's like a non-live performance where you're mixing elements of playing the instrument, work on the computer and balance all the levels and design the tones and all this stuff. It's almost like he's doing the job of the conductor live. Uh, He's doing a lot of different music adjacent things. These ones today were really like pushing the boundaries of what can be considered a guitar arrangement. And I think we're maybe maybe we just don't have enough words to describe <laughs> like these different things and what the heck i don't have all the answers and it makes me frustrated oh i definitely don't need answers but anyway it's interesting all right let's uh let's look at another one before my head explodes uh all right so here we have luminous dark Paul's dream. This one was clickbait for me. I really like uh, <laughs> Strandberg's. He's playing a Strandberg. He's got the headless guitar, which is uh, it's just 
a really cool guitar that is um what i really like about them is they are so lightweight and really like travel friendly at the same time they um i don't know i'm so bad with tools and setting up electric guitars i feel like i would travel with one of these things and then i would like have a problem and i wouldn't know how to fix it and i would be scared to take it to a local shop and then i would just never play guitar again but man they are so cool um all right let's check this out Now, is this playing along with the soundtrack? There's definitely some soundtrack things going on in the background. This is almost a, a guitar karaoke happening. <laughs> oh, what he is layering the two guitars. Reminiscent of the Little Wayne so solo, <laughs> just the one bend back and forth. <laughs> oh my God! Get out of here! This sounds great. Yeah, this is pretty good. It sounds again very similar to the the real deal. I, I I'm actually worried that he's playing over the real deal as the backing track, and then this is going to get taken down off YouTube. Oh, well, that he's, he's done a very good job. Yeah, and if he made that backing track, then. <laughs> yeah, that might be the real backing track. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing that this one is last because I'm going to have to chop it out. You think? Uh, I'm not leaving a copyright strike up. one is interesting i guess um it shows you how cool it is to uh demonstrate everything that you're doing so we were confused like about the backing track um so it's really cool these the like the last one showed us everything that he was doing i really like that i think if you're going to do a youtube sound design arrangement uh that's going to be a, a key part of it in the future yeah something about something about not doing that is is almost kind of like intimidating and frustrating because you're like you know why can't i do that it's like well that's not actually how it is you know <laughs> i don't know i get like little kids and stuff that i teach and they're like they're like you know how come what I'm doing, I'm playing this tab exactly, but it's not matching the song. I was like, because it's it's got a lot of other instruments in there. It's got a bunch of guitars in there. Uh, but if you don't see that, yeah, if you don't see that, you don't really think about it. I guess due to the unknown factors here, I think I want to rate this one a eighty four thousand six hundred and twenty seven. 
Yeah, I'm going to overtake Tony on this one for once, and I'm going to give this one at 85,286. Fair enough. I already forgot what number I said. So <laughs> I'm assuming Thomas is higher, I guess. Um, Who doesn't know? Who knows? Well, the rating, that's not good, you know, Tony, because rating systems for musicians are very, very important, very serious, and not completely illegitimate or made up in every single context in any way. Thank you for reiterating that every episode. It's crucial that the people at home know <laughs> that rating systems are the only thing that matters uh, yeah, 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 when yeah. it comes to music. It's just like the famous, you know, Andres Segovia once said, if you get a nine out of 10, don't ever speak to me again. But if you get a 10 out of 10, I will kiss you and you will become my son. Uh, yeah, I remember I remember when he said that in the famous masterclass videos on YouTube. Um, and he was a weird guy. But uh, I think this was pretty good. It sounded a lot like the soundtrack uh, provided that um, it might have been that wasn't the just the <laughs> We don't know. We don't Bendy. know. Uh, I don't know. Thomas made a Lil Wayne joke on the Bendies, but uh, man, bending electric guitar like tastefully is actually really hard to do, um, <laughs> especially like a yeah. long one like that. I thought it sounded good. And uh, you know what I call that? I call that a, a convenient way to make two notes last the last minute and a half. <laughs> man, I don't know. We saw so many creative things today. I thought that was a really interesting episode, actually. The, yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, Hans. Thank you, Hans Zimmer, for writing. For sponsoring our podcast. Yeah, and thanks for sticking around to the end. If you like what you saw, please leave us a like and subscribe. Let us know in the comments if you have a favorite arrangement from today's episode or if we missed one. And uh, wait <laughs> for it. I was not ready for the outro. It transitioned in there so fast. Also, I was about to make a joke about like um, Hans Zimmer Shave Club or something that I was trying to work out. Uh, Blue Apron. All right. All right. We want to give a big thank you to all the guitarists we talked about in this video. Be sure to check out their videos. You can find them in the description below.